fish and chips. Fish and chips is probably the most iconic British meal, apart from our famous breakfast. And quite rightly so, because it's absolutely gorgeous. It hasn't been around for as long as people may think. I think it's uh, probably late Victorian in origin. But it's certainly caught on and it's uh, certainly become something of an icon of British food. Right, for fish, usually it's a good firm white fish and this is cod. I, I like uh, cod fillets. I also uh, particularly like haddock fillets. But you can use ling, you can use pollock, uh, you can use whiting if you like. But really, you know, the, the, the most famous fish are cod and haddock. So I've got some nice fillets of cod and haddock here and you need wet fillets for this. You don't need frozen so if they are frozen, you can just defrost them in the fridge overnight and then make sure you pat them dry before you start to use them. All right. Uh, I've also got my mushy peas uh, soaking, but there's a separate video on that and you'll see a link to, to, to that up there or down in the uh, description below the video. So I'll put those to one side because if you want to see how to cook those, um, just uh, just click on those links. For the potato element, I'm using uh, these lovely Morris Piper's uh, potatoes. In my opinion, these are the best possible potatoes you can buy in the United Kingdom for making chips. If, if you live elsewhere and you can't obtain Morris Piper's, uh, the best ones to use are would be any kind of baking potato or a floury potato rather than a waxy one so they 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 genuinely make the very best chips possible all right uh, the only other thing you'll need is some cooking oil you'll need some seasonings of course but the next ingredient i'm going to show you is my sneaky secret ingredient and it's a bit of east meets west because I'm using a Korean frying mix and I'm going to make the batter up with this. It's called a Togi frying mix. I got this from Amazon and it is absolutely amazing. And the secret ingredient in it, I believe, is rice flour. So it's got powdered rice in it and it's also got weak flour. So the combination of those two make a super excellent, ultra crispy batter. And uh, you'll see that as we go along. And you just, you can mix this up according to the instructions. But I just uh, eyeball it and as you'll see, it's fairly easy to do. Because it's already there, it's already seasoned and it's all ready to go. I read all this using the translator on my uh, on my phone, but there's also some uh, English translation here. Very good. Right. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is prepare the potatoes. So I'm not a big one for peeling potatoes, so I like to take the ends off just that way, and then cut them. First through the long way, through the flat side, and then cut them and keep halving them that way. And cut them into these nice chip sizes. These ones have got dark bits on, which I shall have to remove. Okay, I've got some uh, salted water here. And uh, you can be quite generous with the salt because it, it'll have two effects. It'll mean that your potatoes are, don't go dark or brown. And the other great effect of this is that it'll slightly bleach your potatoes so that they don't fry and burn too quickly. So as, as you chop up your potatoes, and I just do it, I just keep halving them like this, and dropping them in. And you can make these big, chunky or thin as you like, I like quite a chunky chip, so something like that usually works for me. 
but it's entirely how you like it. If you like them small, do them small, but not too thin. So in the salty water, you now bring that up to the boil from cold and boil it for no more on a steady boil for no more than five minutes and that's it okay you can also do this by frying but the best method I think is by boiling them first and then draining them and then we fry them so I'll take those away and put them on the boil okay while the potatoes are coming up to the boil I'll quickly show you my setup for frying now if you've got a deep fat fryer that's fine use that if it's got temperature controls use that but I don't have room in my little kitchen for all those different uh, appliances so I'm going to use it the old school method I'm using a thermometer to gauge the temperature of my oil as I cook so for this I'm using sunflower oil another good one to use is corn oil when you get into the fats traditionally they would have been cooked using lard across most of uh, the United Kingdom and it is commonly discussed among uh, top chefs that perhaps the very best way of cooking them is in goose fat and duck fat but I'm afraid that's uh, prohibitively priced for me so I shall do it in this way so into there I've put a litre of oil and I'll just bring that up now to temperature and the temperature I want to hit uh, for these is 170 degrees and that's the first temperature I'm going to use for the chips and also for the fish because I've fried both of them twice so effectively the chips are cooked three times and the fish is cooked twice okay they've been uh, boiling on a medium boil for about five minutes so I'm going to take them off now and drain them so now I've drained them they can just sit in the pot and they will dry themselves quite naturally in their own heat now don't want them wet so make sure you drain them properly get out all the moisture and I like to do them in a sieve like that and then tip them back in now you don't want to handle them too much but a little bit of roughing up actually improves the texture and flavour of the chips once they're cooked. So meanwhile I'm going to make up the batter. So you can mix it up according to the instructions or you can just eyeball it like I do. And I'm going to pour in as much as I think I'm going to need. About half of this pack I should think for that amount of fish to one side for a second and I'm also going to want a little bit for dredging of the fillets so I'll pull that in there and put that to one side for now to make up the batter it's just a matter of adding water to it and add a little at a time until you get it right because the, the consistency you want is that of heavy cream or double cream so that is a little bit too stiff at the moment so I'm going to add in a little bit more and if you add a little at a time you won't overdo it you can always add more it's getting there in fact I think that's right there so that's good we've got the batter sorted out looks like we're bang on and then go the chips and be careful at this stage if you're not using a, a proper deep fat fryer make sure that it doesn't bubble up and go over the side of the pan and don't be tempted to stir them all the time just give them a quick light stir to separate them and at this stage we're going to fry them for around about two and a half minutes and you'll notice the temperature's plunged right down 
So in about two and a half minutes the temperature should rise up again. You'll notice I uh, left the peel mostly on my potatoes. Uh, I'm that kind of guy, I do like the peel on the potatoes. If you don't like it, peel it off, it'll work just the same. So once your chips have got to this straw yellow colour, we take them out. So we take them out and set them aside. Okay, now for the fish, the oil's at the right temperature, about 170 degrees. What's that, 340, around about 340 Fahrenheit. And I'm just dredging this first in the flour and then straight into the batter. And then we lift it carefully, let it drain for a second, flip it straight into the oil, lay it down and drop the tail in just like that on those kind of fillets. Shake off any excess, get it into the batter, lift it up, let it drain a little bit, lower it into the fat. And you'll notice that the temperature shot down again because we've put some cool items in it. And then we're just going to let the temperature come up a little bit. Leave that in there for around about two and a half minutes. And then we'll take it out and then bring up the temperature of the oil to around about 190 C, which is about 308, uh, 380 yeah, around about that, 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, after a couple of minutes, they're still yellow, they're not golden yet, and they're not cut completely through. So what we do is we lift them out of the oil, put them safe on a wire rack, And then we bring up the temperature of the oil. At this point you skim off any bits of batter that you don't want in there because they'll burn and then they'll make the fat taste bitter. Okay as the temperature's climbing back up to 190 or 380 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to drop in the pieces of fish again and they'll start to fry very rapidly. Just make a little room for the chips. And then we continue frying that until it's all perfectly cooked, golden brown. As you're cooking, give the pieces a turn to make sure they get an even cooking. You can make the batter just with wheat flour and some like to add a bit of corn flour, cornstarch into it as well and traditionally it would have been seasoned with simply salt and white pepper and nowadays people like to add things like uh, garlic granules even little paprika and sometimes I've seen people use turmeric to give the batter a really nice yellow colour I very much use the colour of it as a guide so I don't really want to be fooled by uh, 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 the colour of turmeric really these chips are looking perfect, so I'm going to get those out. They're just gorgeous, look at those. I love to use Morris Pipers, they, they're an inherently rather sweet potato. And they brown up so gorgeous because they've got that extra sweetness in them. 
I know, it's easy with a basket, but to be honest, half the fun is in chasing the chips around. So my brother's just turned up with a mad and mighty hunger, and he's going to want to be, he's going to want to be fed, isn't he? So let's get this out. Now, doesn't that look gorgeous? Right, let's get this baby served up. Onto the plate goes a generous portion of chips. Also onto the plate goes an equally generous portion of mushy peas. Couple of fillets of delicious fish. And let me just show you something. Listen to this. That super crunchy batter. The only other thing I'll dress that with is a couple of lemon wedges. A generous blob of homemade tartar sauce which my brother absolutely adores. Plenty of that because he likes to dip his chips into it. The final dressing for British fish and chips has to be salt and vinegar. So I'm going to put on some good quality sea salt flakes and traditional British malt vinegar. Just a sprinkling of that. And just to make it look a bit more epicurean and fancy, a little sprig of parsley. Gorgeous. That is a sight that every Brit absolutely loves to see. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications for all my future videos. It would be great to hear from you in the comments and I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. You may wish to check out these titles or even help me out with a donation using the links in the description below the video. Thanks for watching.